Welcome to the Fast Leader Podcast, where we explore convenient yet effective shortcuts that will help you get ahead and move forward faster by becoming a better leader. And now, here's your host, customer and employee engagement expert and certified emotional intelligent practitioner, Jim Rimbach. The number one thing that contributes to customer loyalty is emotions. So move onward and upward faster by gaining significantly deeper insight and understanding of your customer journey and personas with emotional intelligence. With your empathy mapping workshop, you'll learn how to evoke and influence the right customer emotions that generate improved customer loyalty and reduce your cost to operate. Get over your emotional hump now by going to empathymapping.com to learn more. Okay, Fast Leader Legion, today, you know, I'm almost not excited to have this guest on the show today because I, I, I will be greatly disappointed if I only have her on once. Christine Comerford was born in Hollywood, California and raised in Palos Verdes, California and Greenwich, Connecticut. She has one older sister. Her parents divorced when she was 16 and then remarried when she was in her 30s. She cried tears of joy during the entire ceremony. Christine's parents were both entrepreneurs and renegades in their own way. Her mom is an immigrant with English as her third language. Russian and Spanish were her first. She is an artist with fiber and jewelry as her primary mediums. She taught Christine about adaptability. Her father led human resources in the early days of Mattel Toys and Gallo Wine. He taught her about entrepreneurship and tenacity. Christine was always involved in business ventures from lemonade stands to Girl Scout cookies. She got her first job at the age of 14 at a bakery and discovered she loved business even more than she thought. She often questioned authority and the rules, which led her to dropping out of high school and negotiating her way into college at 17. She quit college once she fell in love with computers. Why get a computer science degree when she could just teach herself a program and then get a job? And that's what she did. After a few small companies, she got a job with Microsoft. She had to pretend to be male to get an interview. But that's another story. Later, she launched and took public five companies and then retired. The phone kept ringing and she was asked to use the cool tools she had shared with her employees to get great success. Smart Tribes Institute was the result. Now she works with companies of all sizes that want to create peak performance leaders in emotionally engaging and resilient cultures. She knows people are tribal and that when company cultures provide safety, belonging, and mattering, it yields powerful and sustainable results. Christine currently lives in the San Francisco Bay Area with her husband, Jeff Heron. Jeff does special effects and visual effects for major motion pictures. He's done over 100, so you've probably seen his work. And she has three stepkids all grown. Christine Comerford, are you ready to help us get over the hump? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Okay, so I've given my leads a little bit about you, but can you share what your current passion is so that we can get to know you even better? Yes. Well, my current passion is at Smart Tribes Institute. It is really helping people step in to who they truly are. I find the vast majority of people, even the eight billionaires I've worked with and two U.S. presidents, haven't fully tapped their amazing potential. And when they learn to be emotionally agile, when they learn to be resilient and adaptable at a deep, profound level, when they learn how to bring that experience to others, we can do anything. Okay. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're talking about those people that you've worked with, and still they have issues with not being able to bring their full self. I can only imagine what the rest of us have issues with. Here's the thing. Everybody is showing up the best they can with the resources they have. We bring them more resources than they can show up in entirely new ways. And yeah, it's super wicked courageous for U.S. presidents and billionaires, people that people would think are super accomplished, to have the guts to say, I want to go to the next level. I mean, that's like huge courage. Well, you know, that is a good point. And I think uh, when you start thinking about the next level, it does require push, right? Um, And that push, oftentimes, if you're already at a certain point, well, it doesn't matter if you are or not, you need others others to help do that. Because we all have blind spots. That's why they're blind, right? You can't see into them. You know, and when somebody says, wow, I know I've got some blind spots. I can't see them, but I'm getting this, these responses that I don't want to get, or I can't seem to get over this hump or have these perpetual behaviors that I want to change. Can you help me see through them and see into them and shift them? And we say, yeah, we're about being emotionally agile. See, you know, Jim, the human being will go to whatever behavior feels best, Whatever behavior on their behavioral menu feels best, or if there isn't a better choice, a good feeling choice, they'll pick whichever behavior feels less bad. As leaders, we have this amazing opportunity to help our people expand, to edit, to um, increase their range of behaviors that feel good. So if accountability doesn't feel good, they're not going to be accountable. What if we could take and make accountability feel good? 
So we're going to talk about creating more behaviors that feel good, that actually get people what they want. Gosh, I mean, okay. So as you were talking, I started thinking, and you, you know, you, you said several things there, and it brings me to something that you had in the book. So, so that for me, I often find disconnect and confusion with, and well, quite frankly, in the book, it's difficult to read. So I'm going to have to ask you for a larger map of it, and that is the emotion wheel. And so yeah. I think when you start talking about being able to connect with self, you <laughs> you guys can't see this, but she's showing me a big picture of it, of your video. Um, but I'll give you guys a picture if you want it. Definitely. So A nice, pretty big color wall. Yep. Well, and, and, I, and, and so looking at the emotion wheel and you see how it connects at the core, you know, talking about the hub and the, the, the spindle of it, is oftentimes people will say something and describe themselves a particular feeling or something like that, maybe that they're always used to actually describing themselves with, and it connects back to fear. And so when you talk to them about fear, they're like, no, 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 I'm not scared. I'm like, really? <laughs> so the whole self-actualization piece to me, I think, is a major gap. Yeah, so here's the thing. There are a lot of sub flavors, if you will. So in the emotion wheel, guys, when you see the image of it um, that will get you the, in the scared piece of pie, if you will, the scared sector, it can be, you know, rejected. It can be insecure. It can be anxious. It can be overwhelmed. How often do you hear people say that they're overwhelmed all the time? OK, so here's the thing. If you look at Tra Travis Bradbury's recent research, only 36 percent of humans know how they're feeling at any given time. If we don't know how we're feeling, how can we get to how we want to feel? So we need to first step back and say, OK, the, the emotion wheel is great for this. You know, you're upset or whatever. OK, what exactly is going on here? You look at the emotion wheel, you figure out what you're, what's going on here. Then you can do one of the practices in the book. You can do maneuvers of consciousness, which takes you through a process of resisting what is happening that you're not enjoying to getting really curious to getting kind of amazed that it could even happen to getting in full appreciation and in about 12 minutes, you will shift your emotional state powerfully. That's how resilient we are. We can get in this hamster wheel where we're just ruminating and obsessing about a particular thing, or we can just grab power your tribe. We can use maneuver subconsciousness tool, and we can get into something that we want. You know, I, okay, so for me, and I had this conversation just yesterday uh, with a guidance counselor at my, at my kid's school. So I have a daughter who right now is a, is a freshman. And like many freshmen do, she's having some struggles, you know, and then also when you start talking about the enormity and an impact of, you know, that year, you know, on your academic career, it's pretty significant. And, yeah. and I told her, I said, look, I said, people don't, they don't come out of the womb knowing how to achieve. They have to learn that. And so that's when you start talking about resiliency, you have to learn how to become resilient in order to achieve. Yes. And often when we have a problem, we hyper-focus on it, right? Ow, ow, this feels bad. Ow, I don't like this. And we keep staring at it. And what I want us to learn how to do, because it's so powerful, and you can do this with your daughter, and it will be awesome, is to um, say, yep, that's bad. We want to consent to it. That's bad. That's painful. <sighs> We're feeling overwhelmed, whatever. That's super stressful. Consent to it. We don't want to resist it. And then we say, and what would you like? And then we can go through the outcome frame. Okay, so, and you can even do it together. Hey, so around your experience with school, you know, what would you like? Okay, cool. Something she can create and maintain, not like someone magically to do something for her. Something she can create and maintain. What would you like? Second question, what will having that do for you? How will you feel? What benefits will you get? Grab the emotion wheel because people aren't going to, oh, I'll feel good. No, good is not an emotion. Okay. <laughs> How will you know when you have that particular outcome? Question number three. How will you know when you have it? Well, when I'm getting these grades and when I show up at school and I'm not super nervous and, you know, we need to get evidence and criteria in question number three. Question number four, when, where, with whom would you like this? Well, I just want this at school and I just want this, you know, right now, right? And then question number five, what a value might you risk or lose to get it? To get that outcome that you want in question number one, what a value, what that you value might you risk or lose? Wow. Well, I'm going to have to maybe stretch a bit. I'm going to have to maybe do more homework. I'm going to have to, you know, maybe get a guidance counselor. I'm going to have to not hang out with my friends quite as much, you know, whatever. Um, I'm going to have to tell people that I'm scared and I need help. You know, there's always an ego risk there. And then question number six, what are your next steps? 
And by the time you're done with an outcome frame, please, you guys do them for 15 minutes. Please go deep. If you're going to do an outcome frame, give it what it needs. When we go and we do an outcome frame for 15 minutes, our reptilian brain and our mammalian brain takes it from being a fantasy to a reality. Because when we go in for 15 minutes, we start to see... We start to hear, we start to feel all the good feelings, the visuals, the auditory, the kinesthetic experiences of being in that desired state. Then we can actually start to create it. Otherwise, it's kind of like a a glib fantasy. I think that's an excellent point. So, So for me, as you were talking, I'm like, okay, well, I hit on that. I hit on that, you know, to try to direct, direct her and help her move, move forward. Uh, but uh, it's all those other pieces that I didn't have, and it's going to allow me to close the loop. So thank you for sharing that. And so, yeah. so ultimately what we're doing is we're getting to the point where, where we can actually have and create a resiliency cycle. Yes. In the book, you talk about this resiliency cycle. And if you could yeah. hit on those real quick, please. Yeah. So in the beginning, you know, we are needing to release resistance. Something's happening. It doesn't feel good. We're not enjoying it. And we are sitting there resisting it. And when we're resisting it, we're giving it a lot of energy. And that energy is actually what we need to do something to to create what we do want. So first, we want to release that resistance. And the maneuvers of consciousness that I mentioned is a great process because it takes you from being super resistant to really appreciating whatever that experience is. Next, we have to increase rapport with ourselves. We have to say, okay, so now that I'm not resisting anymore, you know, what would I like? How am I feeling? What part of me is having a challenge with this? And we give you a bunch of tools and power your tribe for that. And then next, we get to make new meaning. Hey, because this is happening, it actually means that. Oh, it's cold and rainy and wet outside. Oh, bummer. This means the traffic's going to be really bad. Oh, it's cold and rainy and wet outside. This means that I can sit down with Joe, who I've always been wanting to hang out with, have a cup of coffee, let traffic pass, and establish this really cool relationship. You know, we we choose the meaning that we make. Stuff happens all the time. We get tons of sensory input flying into our brainstem, but we choose what it means. Nothing is good or bad. Only thinking makes it so. Next, we want to anchor that outcome. So we've figured out the outcome that we want. We've made the meaning that we want around it. Your daughter, it's so awesome that I'm having this challenge at school because it's really helping me stretch and grow and get to know myself and deepen my relationship with my dad. This is cool. Then when we learn how to anchor that, we can set a visual auditory kinesthetic anchor in our body, for instance. We can anchor that good feeling so that when we have those hard days, we can trigger that anchor and flood our system with positive visual auditory kinesthetic cues. Then if we're working with others, we want to enroll and engage others. We want to build that tribal agility so everybody else has these tools. And then we want to expand that tribal power. So as a team, we can adjust and adapt. Now, when we start talking about, you know, being able to get into the team aspects of it, and we, when, you know, when we refer to you know, the different transformations that organizations are just really being forced to have to go through right now for multitude of different reasons is there's a, there's a whole lot of, you know, of those emotions that come into play that could cause us to focus on those bad things instead of the positive things. And, you know, you talk about, you know, to me, which it just jumped out and I'll give everybody the, the actual page number Um, Because to me, it was kind of subtle, but it led on to some really important things. Um, And that was on page 104, where you talk about people must understand, people misunderstand one another daily. And why? It's because we speak different languages and and we're not talking about English and Spanish. We're really speaking different languages at a subterranean or subconscious or primal level. Everyone deletes, distorts and generates and formulates about the environment differently. And therefore, every human has his or her own unique map of the world, his or her map is created based on the environment in which he or she was raised in and a multitude of other factors. And as a, revo- as a result, we are all essentially speaking different languages. And this is how misunderstandings occur. So we have to be aware of that going into when we're trying to create this tribal power and the resiliency and, and understand something that you call the, 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 the meta programs. Yeah. Just tell us about that. Yeah. So, um, We often think back into the last time when somebody was upset based on what you said and you, and you said to yourself or to them, but that's not what I meant. (laughs) It doesn't mean, 
it doesn't matter what you meant. Sorry. <laughs> it matters what they received. The meaning of the communication is the message received. It's not the message sent. It's how it was received. So this is why meta programs, which were discovered by Leslie Cameron Bandler in the 70s and refined in the 80s, there were over 60 meta programs. We're just going to talk about four. Meta programs are so powerful because they are the lens through which we experience the world. This is not personality testing. That's like the third floor of the building. This is meta programs or the sub basement. And what's interesting about meta programs is once you start to, and you guys will figure them out in a sec, once you start to decode somebody's meta programs, you understand the structure of their identity. You understand the structure of their belief system. So let's go over a few of them. For starters, toward or away. Is a person motivated by going toward pleasure, goals, 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 achievement, 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 or are they motivated by away, um, solving problems, mitigating risk, preventing disaster? We need to understand that because if we are goals, 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 toward-oriented people, toward pleasure, we don't think about the pain, but we're trying to sell an idea to our team, right? Engage them in a project, deal with a conflict, whatever. And they are away. The person we're talking to is all about mitigating risk, solving problems, preventing disaster. We're not going to be speaking the same language. If we can sit down with them, with that away person and say, wow, you know, I have a problem. I really need your help. You know, I want to avoid this bad thing from happening. They'll be like, oh, he's speaking my language. When we use meta programs, the person's most primal part of their brain, their creature neurology, their reptilian mammalian brain says, they're the same as me. I don't have to resist them. Okay, so the first one is toward away. So start to think, guys, are you more toward or more away? And there's no right answer. Be who you are. But also these are contextual. At work, you might be one meta program around parenting, around money, around romantic love. You might be another. Let's pick a couple more to illustrate this point. The next is options or procedures. Are you all about lots of choice, lots of possibility? The world is my oyster. I want to be able to shuck and jive and change and pick a bunch of different things. Or are you more motivated by a proven step-by-step process? Sometimes people get confused here. Options people like to create procedures for somebody else to follow. A procedures person, if you interrupt them while they're walking through their five-step process or whatever, they will start back at the beginning (laughs) because you interrupted their flow. You messed up their procedure. A procedures person is compelled to get to the end of the process. So make sure that that, that the end of the process is where you want it to be. We are working with one of our clients. We use a lot of meta programs in sales and marketing. And we laid out this whole process for their procedural prospects, sales prospects, um, And they came back to me and they said, "Um, it's not working. They're not buying anything more. And I said, well, what was the last step in the process? They said, the the sale is closed. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. The last step in the process should be the project is completed and we meet to discuss the next one. They're like, oh, whoops. You know, so options, procedures, know which one you are. And then next, let's look at um, active reflective. Active reflective. Active is like Nike. Just do it. Active people have a short sentence structure. They don't use a lot of words. They're all about action, action, action. They get really impatient. Go, go, go. Reflective people want to consider, ponder, understand, analyze. Then they'll make a decision. Active people sometimes decide too fast and make mistakes and have to rewind. Reflective people, sometimes they take too long, they procrastinate, etc. You need to understand who you are and who you're talking to and ideally put an active, reflective person together on a project. Let's just do one more. General specific, general specific. And Empower Your Tribe, we show you all the decoding questions and all the ways to figure out what somebody is. And a ton of examples of metaprogram language. General specific, general, you know, high level net net executive summary. Specific people like lots of details and then they can start to understand what that high level vision is. If a specific person is talking to or selling to a general person, Pretty quickly, the general person will drop out of rapport. They'll be like, whoa, too much information. Just give me the net net, right? Likewise, if a general person is selling to a specific person, the specific person might not trust them. Well, this is a little too high level. This guy doesn't really know what he's talking about. This is too flaky. What's he leaving out? So high level um, explanation of meta programs, super powerful, beautiful stuff. Well, it is. And as you were talking, I mean, and you mentioned it about sales and marketing, as I do create a lot of you know, marketing content and and material and communications and things like that. And so, you know, what I try to do is 
you know, use both ends of these things within a particular sentence. So you're talking about somebody going towards, you know, a goal and, and avoiding a fear. And if you put that all into one sentence, you actually appeal to both people because they'll pick out the part that connects with them. Okay, Jim, you just said this before. The human brain deletes distorts and generalizes. So yes, everybody, what Jim said is really important. You can do a blended meta program message because a person will delete the stuff that's not relevant to them. Beautiful. Absolutely. So I mean, gosh, <laughs> like I said, I didn't want you on the show just once. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to talk back. about that. <laughs> but there's, I mean, because there's a whole lot of going back to the emotion wheel, emotion and everything that we're talking about, because there's just so much frustration and as well as some of the positive things. When you get these things right, I mean, just the, the, the power and, and the ability of, of to pr- perform and exceed and overachieve is just tremendous. But it's loaded with emotion. Pardon me? You know, the connection between people, the loyalty between people, the consonance that you can build. It's just awesome. The peace. Yeah, it's beautiful. Absolutely. So one of the things that we look on in the show to kind of help, you know, give us a little bit of emotional charge are quotes. Is there a quote or two that you like that you can share? I love leap and the net will appear. Um, I've taken so many risks in my life because it really felt like the right thing to do. And people were like, you're nuts. You really shouldn't do that. But I just felt it. Like, I think all of us have like a little Spider-Man sense, like a little Spidey sense. My Spidey sense was saying, ah, go for it. I'm glad you have taken those risks because, you know, you've been able to produce some of the things like you have within the the power of your tribe. And I'm sure you've affected a lot of lives in the process. But, you know, with that, you know, for you to get to this point and take those risks and pivot and do all that, there's a lot of humps that I'm sure you've had to get over. Is there a time where you've gotten over the hump that you can share? January 15th, 2015, my stepson died. And he was 21, totally healthy kid. Totally happy kid, super athletic, using my prior book, Smart Tribes, to help um, not end, because it's too big to end, but reduce binge drinking at at, um, Sonoma State University. He was doing doing all this amazing stuff. He'd always been just this amazing, amazing child. Um, And when he died at 21, when I got the phone call um, from his dad, who was my my, um, ex-husband, it just, I, I, I... I fell to the ground. It's like my body couldn't stay standing. And I had a bunch of commitments to people. And again, I'm super, super crazy responsible. And I had a really hard time functioning for a week. So my amazing assistant, Alexis, just like took care of smoothing things out for everybody. But it was hard to show up for people because I had like 40 executives that were flying down to the Dominican Republic to do this huge strategic retreat and they really needed my help. I had 300 people that were gathered in this other place. I had all these big, huge, gnarly commitments that I, that I actually had to meet. And I had to reach down into myself at a level that I hadn't reached down to, even with my divorce, um, even with the death of my dad, I had to reach to such a deep place um, inside myself. And then, of course, you know, outside myself. And what I got was that even though I'm super responsible, I realized that I am more supported than I ever knew. And that people really want to help. And knowing that has been huge for me. Because now I can let myself receive in ways I couldn't before. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I'm, I'm sure me and myself, I mean, I can speak for myself and I'm sure the rest of the Legion will say we're sorry about the loss of your son, stepson. But, I, you know... There's, I, you know, for me, I find myself in that story in a couple different moments. I mean, not yeah. to the depth that you're talking about, but I know also that those days are coming in front of me. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. So when, when you start thinking about all of these things that you have going on right now, obviously family is, is very important um, you know, to you. You have the work with the Power Your Tribe and the Institute you know, speaking, yeah. I mean, all, all of these things, coaching, 
when you look at all of that that's sitting, you know, on your plate, what's one of your goals? Um, I have so many. Um, I think I think the biggest one is is really to to know that I that when I one day leave this life, that I have really made a profound difference. And, you know, that's why I'm working now when, you know, I retired when I was 40. Um, and here at 55, here I am working. Um, but there are, the people are so remarkable. Um, and I just, I do hospice volunteering as well. And I just helped my 40th, 40th patient um, pass. And the honor, the privilege Leadership is a privilege, the privilege to help somebody step in to who they truly are. There's nothing like it, you know, and to be able to do that every day, which all of us can, you know, is just, that's what I live for. When the Fast Leader Legion wishes you the very best. Now, before we move on, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. An even better place to work is an easy-to-use solution that gives you a continuous diagnostic on employee engagement along with integrated activities that will improve employee engagement and leadership skills in everyone. Using this award-winning solution is guaranteed to create motivated, productive, and loyal employees who have great work relationships with their colleagues and your customers. To learn more about an even better place to work, visit beyondmorale.com forward slash better. All right, here we go, Fast Leader Legion. It's time for the Hump Day Hoedown. Okay, Christine, the Hump Day Hoedown is the part of our show where you give us good insights fast. So I'm going to ask you several questions, and your job is to give us robust yet rapid responses that are going to help us move onward and upward faster. Christine Comerford, are you ready to hoe down? I'm ready to hoe down. <laughs> All right. So what do you think is holding you back from being an even better leader today? Time management. What is the best leadership advice you have ever received? Put yourself out there. It's uh, Putting yourself out there is more important than smarts. What is one of your secrets that you believe contributes to your success? Tremendous tenacity. What do you feel is one of your best tools that helps you lead in business or life? Meditation. What would be one book that you'd recommend to our Legion? It could be from any genre. And of course, we're going to put a link to Power Your Tribe on your show notes page as well. Power Your Tribe or Smart Tribe. <laughs> so we'll put a link to both of your books on your show notes page. And you'll be able to find that Legion at thefastleader.net forward slash Christine Comerford. Okay, Christine, this is my last update on question. Imagine you were given the opportunity to go back to the age of 25, and you've been given the opportunity to take the knowledge and skills that you have now back with you. But you can't take everything back. You can only choose one. So what skill or piece of knowledge would you take back with you, and why? I would take back compassion, compassion for others and their challenges, because when I was 25, I really didn't get that everybody's doing the best they can, and, and I was really judgmental. You know, and really uh, being able to take back what I see now around compassion and and letting people be who they are, I think would be lovely to have brought back then. Christine, it was an honor to spend time with you today. Can you please share with the Fast Leader Legion how they can connect with you? Yes. Go to PowerYourTribe.com. And that's our new book website. And then if you want to learn about a ton of other stuff about us, you can go to our YouTube channel, Christine Comeford. You can follow us on Twitter, um, at Comeford. And... Um, you can go to our company website, smarttribesinstitute.com. Christine Comerford, thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. The Fast Leader Legion honors you and thanks you for helping us get over the hump. <laughs> thank you for joining me on the Fast Leader Show today. For recaps, links from every show, special offers, and access to download and subscribe, if you haven't already, head on over to fastleader.net so we can help you move onward and upward faster. 